Today we're cooking a pork tenderloin and pork tenderloin is one of the easiest things to cook. You sear it, put it in the oven, bang, something delicious to eat. Why is that? Because the cast iron is hot and it's gonna continue to cook the meat. So I'm just moving around just for it to get the little, little bit of light butter gloss on it. What? You see that? I have another pet peeve as well. When people dry their pork tenderloin, I don't understand it. When you have dry pork tenderloin, it's because you've cooked it entirely way too much. I'm gonna show you how to work that out today. All you need is a nice sear on the outside, set your oven at 350, throw it in there till it cooks up to 147, and I guarantee you, you're gonna have a nice, crispy, buttery kind of flavor, because we throw the butter in there as well. You're gonna have that flavor on your pork tenderloin, and it, it, it just can't be beat. And that'll change your life forever, especially if you're just being tortured to eat pork tenderloin, or you simply don't cook it because it's just too dry. What I have here is a pork tenderloin. I've already salt and peppered, put Mrs. Dash on there, and it's been sitting for 24 hours, and if you let it sit for a couple hours, three hours, four hours, that's even better. It's not better than 24 hours, but it's just as good. You wanna do a process of what we call dry brining. You wanna throw the salt, the pepper, the Mrs. Dash, and you let it sit. And what the salt does, the salt brings the moisture out of the meat. And then as it sits, the moisture sinks back down into the meat. In turn, carrying all the season and the flavor down into meat as well. And it also keeps it moist when you're cooking it. You won't have that dry shoe type texture, tire texture when you're eating on your pork tenderloin. And I said, hey, let me go ahead and film this and, and, and before I cook my dinner, and, and bring them on this journey because my pork tenderloin is amazing. I'm actually gonna eat it with homemade salad dressing and some salad. Not on a diet, just wanna eat light tonight. That's kind of what I do anyway, I eat light. I don't like to eat heavy because it keeps down on the, the gut. You know what I mean? I'm constantly running from the gut. I don't want a gut. You won't catch me eating a bucket of fried chicken maybe once a month, and a slab of bacon. I don't do it together. That's a heart attack, I kind of space it out, fried chicken at the end of the month, bacon at the first, and I might cheat a little bit, have a couple slices on the 15th. That's how I do. The important thing when you're cooking pork tenderloin and you want to put it in the oven at 350, you're going to need an instant read thermometer. This thing will save your life. Set it to 147 and just sit back and watch the numbers climb and just know that you're gonna have this nice, juicy piece of pork. Now, I'm pretty sure somebody watching this video has read somewhere where it says, pull it out at 160, pull it out at 158. That's why you don't like pork tenderloin in the first place, because it's super duper dry. 147 is good to go, because when you let it sit and you let it rest, it's gonna cook up to about 152, possibly. And you'll, you'll be all right, you're not gonna die, trust me. My pan is smoking, and I'm gonna take some grapeseed oil, let me educate you on grapeseed right quick. It has a high smoking point. You don't want to put olive oil in a super hot pan. When your pan is smoking like this, that means it's good to go. So we turn this fan on. Drop the grapeseed oil in here. Now, when you're working with a cast iron pan, I suggest you don't grab it with your bare hands because the entire pan is going to get hot. And you're going to get a nice cast iron brand on your palm. Always use a glove. Always. Take the pork tenderloin, lay it down in here. That's the sound you want to hear when you put your meat in. If it doesn't sound like that, take your meat out, go wash your pan, rinse and repeat, okay? You want it to be really hot when you drop it in there because you want that sear. Right now I'm gonna cut a few pads of butter because butter gives it a little bit of an aesthetic. As I say, butter makes everything better. It's gonna give it that aesthetic. What I mean by aesthetic, it's gonna give it a brown like hue to it versus just having this seared, somewhat pinkish look. The butter gives it some color. So always think of butter as a little bit of taste and a little bit of paint, a little tint adding a hue to your meat. 
Once you drop the pork tenderloin in the pan, you don't want to move it. You want to make sure you sear all four sides before you throw it in the oven. And you want to kind of sear it really hot because once you sear it and you put it in the oven, it should be about 137 or 128. Once you drop it in there, you may have about 10 minutes before it's time to come out after it hits 147. Don't leave it in past 147. Don't pull it out before 147. 147 is the temperature you want to pull this out at. So yeah, we're already getting a nice sear on the pork tenderloin. See how brown it is right there? That's that butter. That's the, that's the good aesthetic that the butter gives along with the sear. Because if I was just to sear it, then it would be a little bit white, a little pink, but you want that butter. That, that's what gives it the brownness. That's what gives it the look. And the whole thing about cooking and eating is an experience. It's supposed to be aesthetically pleasing. You're supposed to enjoy looking at what it is that you're eating. Hence why I don't really care to eat fish. And the eyes and the head is still attached and it's looking up at me sideways like, hey, 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 hey. Don't eat me. My oven's at 350. I'm gonna take my trusty instant read thermometer. I trust this thing with, with all my food that I put in the oven. My temperature inside the pork is reading at 90 degrees, so it's probably gonna take 15 minutes for this to reach 147. That's if your oven's a beast. It might take a little bit longer if it's not. So, in the oven with this thing right here. When we pull it out, we're gonna have a beautiful creation. Something that everybody will fight over when they see it sitting on the table and it's cut up and it's sliced. Matter of fact, you can go to my Instagram, Damon Cooked It, and you'll see my little concoction of my salad and my, my pork tenderloin. And you can hear my uncle smacking and clanging the plate in the background because it's just that good. When this is ready and it reaches 147, we'll be back. Show you the finished product, show you how good it looks, and you guys can kind of drool through the camera. Welcome back, the pork tenderloin has reached 147. <laughs> you like the newscaster voice, don't you? <laughs> Let's see what we have. That was kind of hot. Looks like we have a nicely seared and almost perfectly cooked tenderloin right here. That's what I like about the cast iron. It serves a double purpose. You can sear your meat really good once you sear it, throw it in the oven, bring it back up. You see this? This is beautiful, the texture. See that? That is a beautifully seared pork tenderloin. I don't wanna wait the entire 10 minutes to let it rest. I don't mind some of the juices flowing out because once I cut it, I'll be ready to eat and I have enough fond and butter and, and pork tenderloin juice in the pan. And what is fond, you might ask. Fond is that sticky stuff that's on the pan that a lot of people put it in the sink and they scrape it away. Don't ever do that. Don't do that, okay? Take some wine or some chicken broth. Preferably take both. Take the wine first, put it in the pan, deglaze it, scrape it off with a rubber spatula. I'm gonna make a whole video on pan sauces, but I'm gonna make a pan sauce, nevertheless. That's basically what I'm saying. To go along with this in my salad, and my homemade salad dressing, that's, that's where it's at. But we're about to cut this. And the juice that's on the plate, look at that. We're gonna let it all run down. I'm gonna deglaze that in a few seconds. But for right now, I'm gonna cut into this pork tenderloin. Look at that. Look at that right there. That is the, oh man, the smell is amazing. That doesn't look dry at all, that looks moist. And I know people hate the word moist, but that's the best way to explain it. You want a juicy piece of pork tenderloin. And this is juicy, I can look at it and tell. Let's get a taste. Mm. Oh my God. <laughs> See, if you follow my direct, my bad. If you follow my instructions, the taste was just messing with some type of cognitive function. If you follow the instructions, and you do this to the T that I showed you to cook this pork tenderloin, I promise you, I get one percent guarantee that you're gonna end up liking the other white meat. 
It's dinner time. Enjoy cooking because I'm always gonna enjoy eating. Wow.